Welcome back to the GCN Tech Clinic. In this video, we're gonna answer all of your burning tech questions that you've been leaving under our videos using the hashtag AskGCNTech. If we don't get around to answering your question this week, make sure you pop it down in that comment section below so we can answer it next week. Perfect, shall I go with our first question? Let's do it. Right, it's from Mark Howard. They say, will having a GoPro mounted underneath my Garmin on an out the front mount make a big difference to the aerodynamics of the bike? Well, it is gonna have a negative impact on the aerodynamics yeah. of the bike, but by how much is gonna depend on, well, how fast you're going. Um, and that's, it would depend on how much it therefore slows you down. But unless you're racing or doing time trials, I don't think it's really that important, do you? No, I think it would only make a difference if you are a proper aero geek and you do pay attention to the little things. Ollie wouldn't want to go yeah, his bike. Yeah, Ollie wouldn't. Me on the other hand, I wouldn't mind riding with it on. I don't think it's going to make that much of a bigger difference unless you are chasing those tiny little seconds. Get some sick shots though, can't yeah, you? Yeah, think of all the content you're going to get from it. So um, I haven't tested it, so I don't know an exact figure, but I would say you're looking in the realms of like less than five watts difference. Yeah, not yeah. much at all. Next question, Marlon, who we got? Uh, one from Roger, high tech team. I've noticed that my valve cores are bent at the top. In the past, I've carefully straightened them with pliers. Is that okay to do or should I replace them? And what causes the valve cores to bend in the first place and I'm gonna say it's pretty much all down to when you pump your tires up when you pump your tires up depending on the quality of the pump it can sometimes be quite loose and it can bend um, and it is pretty normal I've had bent valve yeah before and yeah you can just bend them back and just you just need to be extra careful when yeah you them although I've got to say if you are bending the valves back straight again over time you do run the risk of them breaking yes I've had that in the past before and then that would mean you've got to replace the valve core yeah Bit of a pain, isn't it? Yeah, but just, just be careful when you're pumping them up. Yeah, just keep an eye on it. Just don't do anything okay. silly. Right, next question is from Stefan. And they say they were encouraging a friend to go tubeless. Great work. Like to hear there it. Yeah, I know you're going <laughs> to like this question already. Um, he says, one of the phrases they used where you can run your tyres at lower pressure and therefore get less rolling resistance. Unfortunately, his friend then asked, how come that works? And he said he didn't have a clue on the answer. His mind went blank. Can we help? Yes. We Alex is help. your guy. Okay, so lower tyre pressures simply means that the tyre is able to deform over the bumps on the surface that you're riding on. Therefore, it means your bike can continue going along in a straight line. Whereas if you have your tyres pumped up really hard, as you go over a rock, the tyre won't deform and the whole bike has to bounce over it. Yep. So lower tyre pressure is faster over a bumpier surface. It doesn't necessarily mean that lower tyre pressure is just faster irrespective of the surface. Think of like a velodrome. I mean, how hard do you pump the tires up in a velodrome? Like 180, 200 PSI. Exactly, because it's yeah. super smooth. Mm -hmm. So mountain bikes are the opposite end of the scale. You're talking like 15 PSI, because they got- and it, always, it always baffles me. Big rocks. Yeah. When, when, when you go and ride off road and you pump, hardly pump them up, just not used to that. But, yeah, so but I think it makes sense. gravel tires somewhere in the middle of that, you sort of like 30, 40 PSIs. And um, that's how it works, basically. Mm. Simple. Right, next question. Next one is in from Sebastian. Um, oh, are all old frames compatible with the new Shimano Altegra um, semi-wireless DI2 setup or do I need a new frame for the seat post battery? Thanks. Well, no, not all old frames are compatible. You're going to no. need to be able to route some of the cabling internally. Um, and in terms of the battery, yeah, you can fit the battery in. Normal round seat post, 27.2 millimetres. Go on. Why don't you just go for the SRAM wireless? Wouldn't that, have that problem then. You wouldn't have that problem. That's another option. Yeah, so if you use SRAM wireless, got no cables to sort out whatsoever. If you do want to go down the Shimano route, then yep, you've got to route those cables somewhere from the rear derailleur, the front derailleur, inside the frame and into the battery, which, you know, it's not impossible, but it's a bit more It'd of a, be a path. path yeah. yeah. Okay, next question is from John. Wow, this is a long question. They say, I might have to skim through this a little bit. Um, they purchased a new carbon wheel for their bike and unfortunately they've chipped a little bit of the brake track on the front wheel near the tyre by where the brake pad goes. They say the brake pad clears through that damaged section without any contact. Um, basically, they just want to check whether they should be trying to repair it or if it's caused any like irreparable damage to the wheel and what should they do basically. So I would say the first thing for me, if you're saying that the brake pad doesn't contact the area of damage and it's only sort of just into the surface. I wouldn't be too worried, but you could try to put a little bit of lacquer over that little damaged area. So you've done some repairs on frames, haven't you, in terms of the paint. So is that a similar process? So what would you like, dot a little bit of lacquer over it? Yeah, I mean, you could go out and buy specific lacquer for the bike um, or I don't see why you could just use clear nail varnish. Yeah. A few coats of that on. 
could work. Yeah, if it's only like a little tiny yeah. little area of damage, I don't think you have to do anything with it, but if you do want to do that, I think that's, that's a good solution. <clears throat> I don't think it's going to be like damaged wheel. You should no, be fine. I, it sounds yeah. like it should be fine. Next question is in from Chris. Is it worth it to invest in road rims uh, that is still that still use hooks, or would it be better to go for a set of hookless rims? NV and Zip have already moved onto hookless for for a bit now. Do you see other manufacturers moving towards TLR hookless designs? Well, that's a good question. Hookless represents the sort of latest in road it's bike tire technology. It's the in thing. Lots of manufacturers are doing it now. You've got lots of options when it comes to tires. However. Um, you are still a little bit limited by some of the tyres, the type and the size that you can use if you want to go hookless, <clears throat> excuse me, and also you're limited by that maximum pressure that you can use, which I think is about 72 psi. So I'm not really sure, there is a little bit of a trade-off in terms of the limit of some of the components you can use if you use hookless, but I think it is a good technology and I think it will continue to develop further and more manufacturers will adopt it. So I think it's worth investing in. Yeah, yeah I'll okay. go for it. What have we got next? Next one is, interesting username is Wawa1013. Wawa. They say, hi, in regards to a torque wrench, they are clueless. Any advice on which one to get? Should I get? Mainly work on older bikes from the 80s and 90s. Contemplating getting a new gravel bike, if only for the disc brakes. Thanks. Well, there's lots of torque wrenches available. The one that I would recommend is one that has a quarter inch drive on the end of it. That means you can put loads of different adapters and bits on the end. So you've got sockets, Allen keys, hex wrenches, Torx bits on the end. That way it will cover all bases. And you just need to make sure it's capable of measuring as low as you need and as high as you need for some of the different bolts on your bikes. Fairly simple. Definitely nice. worth getting one though. If you want to go super fancy pants, get a digital tool wrench. Oh, very they're, high tech. They're the bomb, yeah. <laughs> Go on then, what have we got oh, next? Next one is in from Anthony. Hey GCN Tech team, I have a Canyon Grail with GRX Di2 and a 38 millimeter tires with 1,000 US dollars to spend. Um, would you better get in a power meter pedals, a second set of wheels um, for the road or buy a used road bike? Oh, what would you do? Personally, I would go for the power pedals. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think they are a very good investment, especially if you're looking to improve your fitness and your power and get faster on the bike, I think. All that data. Yeah, the data and the power pedals, if you did get another bike in the future, you could put it on there or an indoor bike. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, interesting choice. Nothing's right or wrong. Um, <laughs> I fine, would yeah. go for a second set of wheels set up for the road. I think it sounds like they've already got a pretty good bike, so I wouldn't worry about trying to buy a road bike get yourself some good wheels, some good tires, and then effectively you're gonna have two different types of bike that you can use. Yeah, hmm. that's another good option. Yeah. There you go, thousand US dollars, you get some good wheel, good wheel yeah, stuff. Yeah, you could, yeah. Okay, you right. You also get some very nice power pedals. Yeah, or you get some <laughs> nice power pedals. Just to complicate things. Yeah. Um, no, last question is from Zevi Heller. They say, hi, love the videos. It, oh, another torque wrench question. Is it worth buying a torque wrench and making sure everything is perfect or can I just tighten the bolts by feel? Man, what would you recommend? Oh, definitely get a torque wrench because the amount of times, I, I don't know if I'm the only person that does this, you know, you're tightening something yeah. and you're like, is, is, it gonna like break? is it gonna snap? Is this tight enough? <laughs> yeah. You never know, torque wrench solves all the problems. It does, and I think the cost of a torque wrench is by far less than if you break something on your bike and have to buy a yeah, new part. That's very true. And mm. a torque wrench will last you ages. Look after it. Yeah. Be good for loads of different jobs. Yeah. And I feel like once you have one, you start using it on everything. So. Yeah. Fair right. Yeah. right. That's it. No more questions for this week. GCN Tech Link. Sorry if we didn't get to your question. Keep commenting them in the comment section underneath the videos, and we'll try and pick them out next week. Don't be angry at us. We try and do our best every single time. We do. Right. We're gonna go now. See you later.